freedom of expression and freedom of the press. Come here. Do you, you want to get arrested or no? Are pillars of an open and inclusive society. <laughs> there is a clear responsibility by the Egyptian government to hold accountable those responsible for these attacks. <laughs> Just watch. I will not do it. So take me to jail right now. Because I will not. After all that my parents gave me, I can do one thing for them and tell them that I would rather die than be quiet and watch everything that they worked for go away. It's young people who've been at the forefront. A new generation. Your generation who want their voices to be heard. The abuses of the police on the First Amendment, the more people will show up here in New York City, and the more waves of occupation will spread across this country. And you should be proud of that, police, because you are participating in our media publicity campaign. Thank you for the fascinating aspects of this to me is that what it's really done is it has converted um, what a journalist had traditionally been, which is somebody who was deliberately situated on the outside of power as a watchdog over them, you know, driven by the motto, afflict the powerful, comfort the powerless, into somebody who is now very much on every level, socioeconomically, um, emotionally, psychologically, someone who identifies with those in power. People in power are their colleagues, their neighbors. They're friends, they rely on them in all sorts of ways, and it's converted them from watchdog over power into spokesperson and servant to people in power. And to me, one of the most illustrative examples is the reaction of the media class to the Occupy movement. Um, because if you look at what, how they reacted, at first what they said was, um, at first they ignored it um, until they couldn't do it anymore or until someone at Goldman Sachs called them and said, get down there and tell us what's going on. <laughs> Check it out for yeah. us. Um, and they got their, you know, their marching orders from their assignment editor at Goldman Sachs. But um, what, what they, when they finally did start talking about it, the first thing they actually they were saying was, we just don't understand what these people are angry about. I mean, things are going really well. Why would American citizens possibly be angry? Became, um, we don't understand what their message is. What do these people want? Um, and, they're, and, and they're a bit scruffy. Yeah, they're they're kind of crusty and dirty. And yeah. you know, the whole idea of what do these people want was even too stupid for our political discourse because you could, for example, begin with the name Occupy Wall Street. That sort of gave a hint about what the message was to the program. And then, um, one of the guys involved in my uh, favorite. Uh, Occupy Wall Street feed. I'm talking about the other 99. Tim Poole. Tim, welcome to the program. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. Now, uh, give us a little background. When did you um, uh, did, did you start doing this on your own? How many of there are you, and when did you start? Well, there's. We started with four of us. Uh, there's Henry James Ferry, Will McLeod, Jesse LaGreca, who most of you probably know, and then me, Tim Poole. And we've been doing this since the very beginning of Occupy Wall Street. It's uh, sort of been a snow, uh, snowball rolling down a hill. You know, as time goes on, we build more momentum. And we, I guess we saw a really big spike in that this past week. What, what, right. what is your agenda? I mean, how do you perceive yourself? Are you a reporter? Are you an activist? Is, uh, is there something in between? I mean, what you're doing is a relatively new phenomena in media to be – uh, live streaming like this with so few uh, bars to entry. Um, what, what, what do you? How do you perceive yourself? I, I perceive myself as an activist. I've always perceived myself as an activist. I'm doing this for transparency, which I feel is really the most important thing when it comes to you know policy and historical events. Too too often, or actually, it's a fact that history is written by the winners. And on Tuesday and Thursday, that just wasn't true. History was just written uh, on the live broadcast through my point of view. 